second story cannabis and what's happening with it the government has decided to open up um, a, a committee to consider tightening at, at a time when the world is cons is loosening and legalizing and uh, le legalizing medical use and legalizing uh, decriminalizing and even legalizing recreational use and so on um, the Japanese government has for whatever reason decided at this time it's a good time to actually uh, tighten laws on marijuana apparently right now um, the laws uh, against uh, marijuana are more associated with uh, selling or distribution or so on um, certainly you know bringing it into the country is a terrible terrible idea it is basically the equivalent of a class one or class a listed drug or whatever it's like considered a hard harmful drug um, and you don't want to get caught accused of doing you know anything with it but apparently simply using it simply having it in your blood um, you get arrested for possession of it, but, but there is no crime at the moment for use of it. And they want to add to the crimes of possession, importing, and distribution. They want to include a crime for use. So theoretically, this would mean that if you were to get off a flight from uh, Seattle or from some state in the U.S. where it was legalized and they found it merely in your blood, they want to criminalize that. Um, to offset that part of the debate that they're having about revising the, uh, the Cannabis Control Act laws, in Japan as they are actually looking at should they uh, allow uh, cannabinoid based or you know, marijuana based medicines for example even including, me including medical marijuana so uh, there's a small I suppose upside that the government of Japan for the first time since it was criminalized and by the way remember MJ was not criminalized by Japan technically it was criminalized by GHQ it was criminalized by the Americans occupying Japan after World War II and it just like a lot of things that uh, were foisted on Japan or imported by Japan like the, like the Constitution for example uh, it just sort of stayed put um, but um, yeah at the, on the one hand they are looking at loosening up certain things I mean again um, obviously I don't I don't need to tell anyone here that there, there there are cases where um you know certainly compared to synthetic um you know things like pain drugs and so on which can be addictive and which can have all sorts of horrible side effects you know there, there's all sorts of uh proven um medicinal valid medicinal uses that that that, that, that have clinical benefits uh that are better than, than created pharmaceuticals um, where it benefits people and you know it seems silly that you would just and particularly when you as I've talked about on the show before um, the history of um, hemp and uh, uh, cannabis in Japan and the fact that it uh, I don't know if it's actually indigenous to Japan or whether it was brought in but basically I mean it's part of Shinto religion that was widely grown the entire Japanese war effort was based uh, upon um, hemp based uh, sort of materials and whatnot uh, there was no synthetic because of course japan didn't have petroleum it was subject to an oil embargo so you know all all of the sort of clothes all of the sort of airplane coverings you know the whole war effort was basically done by hemp um part of the reason that ghq outlawed uh, all forms of cannabis and hemp after world war ii was the um desire to well one because it was so involved in the the war effort and two because the americans wanted to sell synthetic and petroleum based uh materials to japan and they wanted to make them dependent upon that so you have all of that and you have this sort of weird history which sort of really contradicts just the fact that it is plentiful so why is japan now at this time i mean set aside the fact it's a pandemic but also when the world is really clearly moving the other way why is japan looking at increasing the uh criminalization of marijuana and doing the opposite uh i have theories on this it was funny a lot of people offered some theories on this most people commenting on twitter about this just said oh they can't believe that japan is you know not getting with the rest of the world um, however, I, the conversations around this are fairly consistent. Now, I know people in Japan, Japanese people, who uh, have been around this stuff, who, who, who use this stuff and so on. Um, so, you know, it's possible to get. I think the general st stigma that's associated with marijuana, it's not so much... Uh, people think well it's it's you know it's not as bad as alcohol or it's not as bad as cigarettes it's silly you know the law is silly but the question as to whether the law is valid or not never really comes into it you know in Japan uh, laws in general are just treated like other sort of rules they're just like a test are you one of the people who follows the rules or are you one of the people who don't and if you're one of the people who don't the stigma associated with it is not so much the idea that you're going to become you know a schizophrenic murderer like they tried to do with the reefer bandis thing in the u.s there's no real 
I've never really heard any sort of discussion of reefer madness or sort of negative health effects or so on. Um, even people don't even like again a lot of the arguments I heard when I was a kid uh, against it the idea you know the the sort of propaganda that it's illegal you know sorry that it's not that it's illegal that it's addictive and so on. You don't even hear that. The reason that marijuana generally is uh, is sort of stigmatized in Japan and the reason that when you hear you know a celebrity has been uh, arrested for it and it, it is a big scandal. It's not so much the thing itself, it's the fact that in order to get it, you must have associated with criminals to get it. It's like having a tattoo, uh, you know, under the old sort of system, at least anyway, where tattoos were seen as signs that you're a member of an organized crime syndicate or Yakuza. It's the same thing that, you know, if you are the sort of person who gets drugs, then it means that you are the sort of person who associates with people who can provide drugs, who by nature, given that it's illegal, would be organized crime. Um, and it's... And, and you know, there are a lot of celebrities uh, thinking of um, uh, Ryo from uh, London Boots and, you know, a bunch of cases where even going out to dinner, uh, like having a party where you're entertaining known gangsters is enough to get you at least suspended from being on TV or in the media for a couple of years. And it's similar sort of punishments and similar sort of stigma associated with uh, marijuana. So it's essentially almost pure um associations with marijuana that actually cause the uh sort of strong reactions to it uh, my personal feeling is that this is uh, to me looks like another symptom where the age of parliamentarians is increasingly going up and where the society as a whole is also becoming much more and japan is like a, a bit of a window into the future for the rest of the world where you know the whole society young people people like under 30 are such a minority now and a shrinking minority with less and less kids being born every year so much of the society is now like a third of the society is over 65 um nearly all politicians are over 80 and so it reminds me when, 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 you know, there was discussion that Japan had these outdated laws that affected nightclubs that were essentially, again, legacies in the 1950s. They were laws uh, against prostitution in go-go bars in the 1950s um, that were just because nobody could really think of a nightclub like you would have nowadays that, that, that had laws against dancing after 10 o'clock, like, you know, the Footloose laws. When the government went uh, uh, under some pressure to, uh, you know, change these laws, these 80-year-olds sat around and, and, and thought, well, for a start, the clubs should be fully lit and people shouldn't dance. And they actually, like, tightened the laws uh, against dancing and, and, and having dark nightclubs. Japan is the best nightclubs in the world, and it's actually, like, a great thing. And it was basically, you know, elderly regulating, like like legislating against young people. The same sort of thing where uh, while they uh, did vote, where they did uh, decide to reduce the age of majority, you know, to allow voting by 18 year olds and so on. And that's a generally positive thing. There is this weird thing that 18 to people under 20, so particularly 18 and 19 year olds in Japan, um, actually can't make legal contracts. They're not actually, they're actually a 19 year old in Japan, even someone who's graduated high school by the way mandatory education is only until middle school so they could have been out of school and working for four or five years and they're still not allowed legally to sign contracts until they're 19 so there's good lots of good reasons that they brought it down to 18 however a big part of that the reason for that lowering of the age of majority was the desire to make uh, 18 and 19 year olds criminally responsible it was to lower the age of criminalization and yeah you know what a, a big part of the reaction to the legalization push in the u.s has been that uh, the fear that, oh, we're sending, you know, little case gate over to America for, uh, you know, an exchange call or whatever. What if he, you know, <laughs> gets into the wacky tobacco and comes home? So this is why the, uh, you know, the Japanese consulates have been uh, issuing notices saying that, you know, even if you use uh, marijuana where it's legal, uh, if you're a Japanese person or a Japanese resident even, so you don't even have to be a Japanese citizen. You can be like me, someone who lives in Japan. You are breaking the laws of Japan if you uh, take recreational marijuana anywhere in the world. Uh, and we may prosecute you for it. And that's where this kind of de debate about actually making it prosecutable to have it detected e like within you, like to fail a, a marijuana like P test or blood test or whatever they do, um, you know, and to criminalize that. Yeah, it's actually like a moral outrage reaction to that. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? If my theory is correct, that this is just increasing. I mean, apart from that, it drives me crazy on all sorts of levels. The idea that 80-year-olds and 70-year-olds today are legislating so harshly against basically youth culture. Um, when you consider what Japan was like in the 1960s and 70s, when, you know, 
people in their teens and 20s were like bombing buildings and hijacking airlines and shutting down universities and you know literally storming the capital in japan you know uh, we literally had that including people dying i think in the late 1960s or early 1970s um you know when you look at the the, the culture of the time the movies from the time i mean you know you read anything about that time uh, the criminality among young people from the 60s and 70s who are now 80 years old they were punks they were a generation of punks and the kids now uh are, they vote conservative they're law-abiding they don't drink they don't smoke and and yet it's like elderly politicians are looking for more things to, to, to criminalize being young and yeah if you think this is just a japan thing i think buckle up this is essentially facebook uncles legislating for the for society there's it's already happening in australia and uh yeah, hell i mean we're, we're already starting to see it in places like america and i think uh I think it's manifesting here in unpleasant ways, but I think it's kind of probably going to be way worse when you start to get the same demographic trends. I mean, already you get a population depopulation happening in America, or sort of uh, you know aging society trends, and this is what it looks like at the at the edge of the wave. Um, we'll see. I mean, look, the upside is is that it may lead to actual uh, therapeutic use, uh, legitimate therapeutic use of marijuana, which would be a good step towards actually addressing some of the stigmas. It's probably what contributed to the r removal of the stigma and the legalization that's happened in America, um, breaking through, you know, the irrational uh, criminalization of medical marijuana. So we'll see if they can do that in Japan. But yeah, that's a thing that is happening. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. It's not clear um, if it's going to go anywhere. But uh, right now, uh, you know, the government has overwhelming freedom to, you know, legislate whatever it wants. So the fact they're even discussing this means that they're probably going to do it. So, yeah, interesting times anyway. Personally, um, you know, um, I barely drink. I don't smoke. Uh, uh, but all things being equal, yeah, to me, it's just weird and inconsistent not to regulate it. I mean, alcohol, which I, and I, I'm happy to drink. I don't drink very often, but, you know, but people do screwed up things when they're drunk. And I've seen stone people, and believe me, I compare, compared to all the other things, um, you know, yeah. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, it should be, it should be legal. I don't see a reason. Well, honestly, for all the other things that are out there, it's a waste of resources criminalizing this. Jake Adelstein did call me a, a ping. He responded to me on Twitter and, and said that he felt like it was just the police were bored of having no crime to chase. So they're inventing new crimes that they can chase people for. And maybe that's part of it. That's a bit flippant. But, you know, yeah, certainly, certainly it's messed up. I agree. So that's what's happening with uh, tightening of legislation of cannabis in Japan.